We have been tasked with designing a self-healing hydrogel patch for use in the treatment of lower back pain caused by tears in the annular fibrosis of the intervertebral disc. The intervertebral discs provide cushioning for the vertebrate and reduce the stress caused by impact. They have two main constituent layers: the inner nucleus pulposus and the outer annulus fibrosus. The nucleus pulposus contains a jelly-like liquid of water and collagen fibers, crucial for shock absorption. The annulus fibrosus covers this layer. A common cause of lower back pain is a tear in this outer layer, causing leakage. The most common treatment is a discectomy, in which the damaged area is removed. However, this is far from ideal. Alternative treatments involve injection of therapeutics. However, due to the high pressure in the nucleus pulposus, some of this liquid can be pushed out. Our patch is designed to cover the tear and reseal after needle puncture, preventing spillage. This will be achieved using a two-polymer hydrogel network. Some of these crosslinkers will be ionic, and some will be hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds can easily break and reform, as shown, therefore introducing the healing property. This consists of a two-polymer network linked with ionic calcium crosslinkers. So we aim to introduce hydrogen bonds using uridopyrimidone (UPY). This molecule is able to bind with another molecule of itself to form a self-complementary dimer with four hydrogen bonds. Our concept builds on an existing hydrogel, allowing us to use pre-existing protocols by a peer-reviewed paper, ensuring times and resources were not wasted in designing a new protocol from scratch. Secondly, the concept uses chemicals which were easy to source from our supervisor's lab, allowing us to start synthesizing test gels in a small time frame. In addition to that, other chemicals were available through direct order and did not require chemical alteration. This eliminated the need for testing different chemical processes and the errors from complex organic chemical synthesis. The base hydrogel had already undergone a biocompatibility test, meaning our concept had a preliminary check on safety for users. You can see here just how UPY forms its self-complementary dimer. Due to UPY's ability to form hydrogen bonds, SDS was used to provide it with a hydrophobic environment in the form of micelles to prevent competitive hydrogen bonding with water. Here you can see the polymerization of the acrylamide and UPY head. The process incorporates the entire UPY molecule into the polymers and the UPY head then interacts with each other from different polymer chains to form crosslinks. The key requirement of the patch is to be self-healable after penetration with a needle to prevent spilling of the injected substance or leakage of the nucleus pulposus. This will be tested by cutting the gel and trying to stick it back together. Joined pieces should remain intact. Another important requirement includes being tissue adhesive in an aqueous environment, as the patch will be inserted to the body and would need to attach to the target area. It should also be non-toxic and biocompatible. The spine needs to withstand high pressures, so the patch must be able to withstand 70 million cycles of hitting, also pressures of up to 200 millimetres of mercury. This requirement will be examined in two tests, using hydrogels made in a mould which we designed and manufactured. The tensile test entails stretching the gel until it tears to ensure that patient movement does not cause the patch to break. The patch must be easily transported to clinics and the size must be customizable as the size of the AF tear is different in every case. It should also be affordable as it is an accessory to the main treatment. Yes, with further work, it will likely be self-healable and more rigid once the correct cross-linker density has been found. Currently, the cross-linker density is too low. However, a higher density will give better mechanical properties. It's ambiguous as to whether the gel is self-healable or very sticky at this stage, likely for the same reason. Regarding biocompatibility, the base hydrogel is biocompatible, meaning ours should be too. We predict the gel would be compatible with the existing bridging polymer, ensuring it is tissue adhesive. Each patch costs under £6 to make, making it affordable. It's easily transported in a sterile Ziploc bag. For our current design iteration, we would like to continue trying different concentrations of crosslinker until we obtain a more sturdy self-healable gel which is able to withstand force and hold its own shape outside of a mold. After this is achieved, we can properly perform the tests we have planned including the application, notch, and burst tests. There's still a long way for us to fulfill the ideal of our current concept. However, looking even further to the future, we would like to make the hydrogel injectable rather than a patch. This means that we need to explore more available base gel since injectable hydrogel require different chemistry to the one we are working on.